So last Sunday I talked about how at this time last summer my daughter Elise and I walked about 500 miles for five weeks across northern Spain on the Camino de Santiago. We also learned a brief history of the Camino and I talked about the common elements of a pilgrimage. The Camino is a Catholic pilgrimage and pilgrims usually walk 13 to 20 miles each day carrying all that they need on their backs and they stay in hostels called albergues. <coughs> Today I'll be talking about how the Camino showed me what is essential about being a human. The Camino stripped our days down to the bare essentials, walking, eating, playing, and sleeping. I use the term playing loosely, more like to mean enjoying ourselves with solitary or social activities. I was surprised by what little I needed, not just to survive, but also to be happy. The survival list is short. Food and water, shelter, clothing, and physical health, much like the basic needs on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Here in the US, many of us have an excess of food, water, shelter, and clothing but a deficit in physical health given our rates of diabetes and heart disease, for example. And of course, there are Americans who lack a sufficient quantity in all of these. Food and water are obvious survival items, but many who live in privilege take it for granted and eat in excess and leave a lot to waste, simply grabbing from the shelves of the supermarket and their pantries, myself included. On the Camino, we had to make sure we had plenty of water and knew how long we had to walk before we'd come to another water source. We could not carry a lot of food because of the weight, so we carefully chose food for calories, nutrients, and weight. We became more conscious about what we put in our bodies. Shelter is another obvious item on the survival list. On the Camino, we slept <coughs> on bunk beds and shared a room and bathroom with dozens of people. If we were dry and the right temperature, we slept well and were ready to get up at 5 a.m. the next day to walk again. I was ready. My daughter complained of it. <laughs> Some albergues were more luxurious than others, but I found that my favorite albergues were sometimes the rustic or crowded ones because they were the ones where I connected and enjoyed my time with fellow pilgrims or the local people. For example, I have a fond memory of sitting on a tile floor between our bunk beds to play Uno with a Spanish boy and older gentleman as we listened to the thunderstorm outside. Another favorite albergue was where we had a vegetarian communal meal and the pilgrims representing the US, Switzerland, Germany, and Lithuania stayed at the table talking until late at night. But many homes in the U.S. are beyond shelters. They are movie theaters, playrooms, and offices. With bigger homes comes more work and costs. So we work more to maintain our big homes and spend more time entertaining ourselves and less time with friends. But in the Albergues, <coughs> all we needed was a place to sit so we could talk and connect with other people. Clothing is similar to shelter. On the Camino, we only had two changes of clothing with us, and we had to wash our clothes in the sink and dry them in the sun. Everyone pretty much wore the same type of clothes. Things that were cool, dried quickly, had pockets, and were in need of a good cleaning. <laughs> Elise and I spent way more time prepping our feet in the mornings than our clothing, face, and hair. For example, in Elise's battle with blisters, every morning she applied anti-inflammatory cream, Vaseline, moleskin, compede, and rubber toe sleeves. How we looked had absolutely no impact on how our Camino would go. But if our feet were unhappy, our days were much harder. Here, we go beyond the basic necessities of clothing. We use it to convey messages about who we want to be, how much money we have, or to present ourselves in a standard that we aspire to. 
But after so many weeks of not putting on makeup and wearing the same clothes day in and day out, and finding my looks to not be a factor in how my day went, I find my appearance and that of others to be less important. I was never one to do or spend a lot on my appearance to begin with, but I no longer wear makeup on a daily basis or feel apologetic for that. Nor do I feel like someone is better than me because they are able to look so put together every day. How we dress and style ourselves are simply choices that we make each morning. It does not define us as a person. Walking so many miles each day, a person becomes very aware of their body. If you're smart, you quickly learn to pay attention to what your body tells you in order to walk the distances you want. Your foot has a hot spot, stop immediately and cover it. You're thirsty, drink. You're tired, rest. We saw many people who could not complete their pilgrimage due to injuries of use or wear. Our physical body was a major player in whether or not we would complete the Camino and whether or not it would be an enjoyable experience. And that is true for all of us in our lives. Though in our modern age, we focus more on how our body appears than on its health. If we worry less about aspiring to the body of a 20-year-old model,